All right, Tubulars, I am loving this eGPU and I wanted to actually follow up with you on a video that I did for my initial review and impressions of this box. You can check that out. Uh, it's very detailed. This one will be a bit more streamlined, but one of the questions that I really wanted to answer was, can you get this thing off your desk? Does it actually have to be used or connected with the cable that comes with it and the answer, the short answer, really is no. But I do have those details, so let's get into it. All right, so yes, we are gonna be talking about cables, especially when you need to be getting that eGPU further away from you. And of course, why would you wanna do that? Well, you wanna get that extra real estate on your desk and to get the noise of that graphics card away from you. And what I mean by that is that there was actually a user over on the other video had, who had asked me about the noise, is it obnoxious? It would have been cool to do a test. So really briefly, let me run through the noise, uh, the decibel levels. So when the card is actually running idle, it will run at about 34 decibels. And so let's actually just tune into that just for a second, just so that you have some context. So not too bad, but when we're actually asking something of that graphics card, when we're doing something graphics intensive, then that thing starts to ramp up and it sounds a little bit like a jet engine. And on the low end, I got 49 decibels, but I was getting a peak of around 60 decibels. So let your ears sink in on that one. All right, so probably a bit more annoying and you're thinking like, yes, I do not want that next to me. That would actually cause me to lose my mind. Maybe it's something that you're gonna get used to, but what is really important is that you know the cable that you're buying because essentially the eGPU enclosures are typically coming with what's called a passive cable. That's why they're so short. Now I'm gonna be linking up a resource that has more information, but I just at least wanna let you know that I was able to find a cable, Cable Matters from Amazon, and this is not a passive cable, but this is actually an active cable. Now a passive cable is what it is. It is short, the communication flows between one end and another, between the computer and the eGPU, uh, pretty much without any bottlenecks or issues that would be normal of your CPU, RAM, or any other um, issues that you would have um, with communication. So that's why it's so short. Now, the cable matters cable and being active, it doesn't have to be cable matters, it could be another cable, but this has transistors inside of it to help boost and keep that communication going uh, much further and consistent because this cable is 6.6 .6 feet and I roughly like give or take, like I have my eGPU now around six feet away from me and having those transistors is helpful to keep that communication consistent. But I also want to preface to make sure that you know having the Thunderbolt 3 and yeah, USB type C versus Thunderbolt 3, I wish there was kind of a better standard here, but make sure that you have the icon that has that Thunderbolt image along with the number three on it because there's plenty of cables out there that'll say active on them, but they're Thunderbolt 2 rated at 20 gigabits per second. And what you're looking for is 40 gigabits per second. So what the 2017 MacBook Pro that I'm using, what it's actually capable of as far as that communication back and forth. Now I wanna talk about a couple of benchmarks, but let me preface, the benchmarks are benchmarks. That's all they are. I will talk about a couple of things that I ran in Final Cut Pro, and then of course, just a quick uh, gaming and some heaven benchmarks. So starting with the passive cable, I was able to get an OpenCL Geekbench 4 rating of 139,312. Now for the active cable, that again is roughly over six feet away from me, I was actually able to get 142,213. Now I don't know why that was a little bit higher. Again, it's just a benchmark. I ran it several times and I was that's basically what I was getting around 142,000 with this particular cable. Now going back to the passive cable and doing a heaven benchmark, but before I talk about it here, I want to actually update the community because I do not like to give bad information because I had some higher numbers on my benchmarks from my previous video, but I did not actually have things optimized for this MacBook Pro and the display 
because internal display versus external display, there's a, a, a bottleneck that happens there. There's a performance drop that happens. I don't want to get into details about it in this video. You can check it out on the other video and the information that I put over there. But what I will say is that I optimized heaven for this MacBook Pro, the display and everything. And I was also running a tessellation at ultra or extreme or whatever it was, just the max settings. And on the passive cable, I was getting 53.1 frames per second on average. Now for the active cable, I was actually getting 52.8 frames per second. So not really much of a drop and ultimately what you would find, you know, running heaven several times over and over again. I mean, we're talking like a few tenths of a difference here. Now, another thing that I wanted to update the community on because I had initially commented on the SanDisk uh, SSD that I had purchased for that enclosure, but what I do want to let you know that there is just a, a, a normal bottleneck there, um, a communication delay because it's not inside the computer, it's going through that Thunderbolt 3, so you are going to get some loss there. So I just wanna let you know that I did run some benchmarks on that and what I was actually finding as far as read and write speeds on the passive cable, I was getting 288.3 on the write and 372.1 on the read. Now for the active cable, I was getting 292.8 on the write and 373.9 on the read, and that is like mimicking or just giving an example of 4K footage that I would be working in and that at 10 bit. Now talking about the real world use case when we talk about Final Cut Pro, and I'm not gonna compare it to another editing software because really I just wanna talk about this benchmark or at least this use case. Let me preface in Final Cut Pro, I used fresh project files, fresh libraries. So two different libraries, two different projects, um, using the same clip, but I didn't want anything to be cached. So on the passive cable for a 15 second clip of a shot of me in the car where the footage was pretty shaky, for that 15 second clip to stabilize it, I was getting one minute and 11 seconds to stabilize that versus on the active cable, the longer cable matters cable, I was getting one minute and 23 seconds. So maybe some kind of drop in performance, but ultimately a few seconds here, I mean, that might've been a fluke, but I did run it over and over, and I was finding that the Cable Matters cable was just a slight drop in performance on that. Going into the same clip, adding a LUT for the passive cable, I actually got that 15 second clip, 26 seconds, for that LUT to completely re render versus on the active cable, it was 32 seconds for that same LUT and that same clip. Now take that however you want it. Like I said, there's just a few seconds here or there. Is it a performance drop? It may be slightly, but ultimately in real world use to have that eGPU away from me, um, I, I will appreciate that. And, and if it is a, a little bit of a drop, I don't mind it as much. Now, giving you the use case of playing Fortnite, because again, that's the example that I have. Uh, there were no changes whatsoever between the passive versus the active cable and Fortnite on MacBook Pro, not in boot camp, just running in Mac OS. I was still getting between 30 to 34, 35 frames per second um, on that. So no stutter, no issues with graphics performance whatsoever that I had noticed. And that again was on the internal display. So your mileage may vary depending on the cable that you buy. Just make sure that it is rated at Thunderbolt 3. It is also rated at 40 gigabits per second as far as that communication is concerned. And it also has a charging ability at around 100 watts because certainly you do not want your eGPU to be able to allocate that power, but the cable itself not able to deliver it to your computer if it requires uh, that much power to charge. So be sure to hit me up in the comments below if you have any questions or concerns. I really appreciate you tuning in on this one. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to do that and like that and hit the bell so that you get notified of any updated reviews that I'm doing. I've got a ton in the pipeline, so that's definitely coming in on this channel. And as always, continue to do things that matter. Go rock faces. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.